Hi everybody, welcome to Elementary Classical Mechanics, the subject where observing the universe suggests new mathematical and computational approaches that can literally transform our way of modeling and predicting any aspect of the world. Hi everybody, welcome back to Elementary Classical Mechanics. In this lecture, I'm going to talk about the exercises at the end of Chapter 3. Okay, there's a good set of exercises here that is going to uh, really help you to understand the ideas in this chapter. So problem one is pretty straightforward. I'm giving you a concrete example of a space curve, and I'm going to ask you to compute the elements of the uh, coordinate system at any point on the space curve that we derived in the lecture. So I want you to find the unit tangent vector, uppercase T, if R is a position vector of the particle, moving on C at any time, verify that the velocity is the magnitude of velocity times T, compute the curvature at any point on the curve, Compute the radius of curvature, it's just the reciprocal. Compute the unit principal normal in, at any point on the curve. Okay, now, question two. Particle moves in the plane, so its position vector is given by r is cosine omega t i plus sine omega t j. Omega is constant. I want you to prove that the velocity of the particle is perpendicular to r. Sounds like a dot product. The acceleration is directed towards the origin and has magnitude proportional to the distance from the origin. Okay, those are just straightforward calculations to do. And straightforward, you need to know the right calculations to do and interpret them correctly. And then show that r cross v is a constant vector. And this is going to come back in when we learn about central force motion towards the end of the course, these ideas. OK, problem three. Let r of t denote a position vector and consider the function 1 half m, m is a constant, r dot dot r dot. And I want you to compute, so that's the, the right-hand side is a scalar. I want you to compute the uppercase T with respect to the lowercase T, dt, dt. Okay. Just a little hint later on, you'll see that that has the form of the kinetic energy of a particle, and computing its time derivative is important in a lot of mechanical applications. So let V of R be a scalar-valued function of the position vector R of T. I want you to compute dv dt, which is kind of a chain rule going on here, and express it as the product of two vectors, the dot product of two vectors. Problem five, I give you a space curve in um, three dimensions. I give you a scalar valued function. I want you to evaluate the function on the space curve and then compute its derivative with respect to t. Again, that should be straightforward, but kind of getting learning about the vector formalism, getting things straight is good. All right, now, with the same space curve, in fact, the last three exercises are concerned, with the same space curve, I want you to compute the length of a piece of the curve from the point 1, 0, 0 to 0, 1, pi over 2. Now, I would first make sure those points are on the curve, or else it's not a very well-defined problem. Um, and this looks like an arc length problem. Okay. And then building on that, in problem 7, 
parameterize the curve in, in the previous problem in terms of arc length rather than t. Good exercise. So for this example and the previous two exercises, I want you to show explicitly. Now I did this in the lecture when I was defining uppercase t, the, the um, unit tangent vector. Often when you see chain rules, they tend to go very fast and it always looks good. But then if you want to verify it in, in a specific example, that's when the real test is. And so that's what I want you to do in this problem show that that relation that I derived in generality holds for this specific example. Okay, so that's the problem set for this section. We're going to, in the next chapter, do a lot more examples of line integrals, and I have a lot also in the solutions manual. In the past, I just gave that one example from the from this chapter and it's it is a really important but complicated thing to get your head around the notion of a line integral so I, I have a lot of different examples and we're going to see line integrals throughout the rest of the course that's why it's it's quite important to really get it down and then we're going to have uh, reintroduce ourselves to newton's laws and then we're going to that means we're going to get going on dynamics so that's all for now I look forward to starting chapter four. Bye.